All right. Welcome. Welcome. I say welcome because it's the beginning of the show. The question is, what show are we actually watching? And the show that you are watching right now is Full Auto with Dimitri and Paul. And now, your host, Dimitri. All right, Dimitri, go ahead. You got the show. Go ahead. Just Howdy ho! Oh, gosh. Okay. Howdy ho, everybody! Yep, okay. That's, Howdy ho! This will be the last show he does after that. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah, you're finally, you're relieved oh. of duty, sir. Oh. Sir! <laughs> End of watch for Dimitri. Are you streaming oh. live? Because I'm not getting anything. Yeah, my yeah, we're Google. live. Are you, are, go to, uh, ooh, watch maybe videos. we're on the State of Wake Facebook page is where I'm live streaming on. So look up the State of Wake Facebook page there, sir. That's what we do. And that's what we do when we're live streaming. While we're live streaming, we look up our show. And actually, we and do have to look auto, up our full auto Facebook page. Yeah, but but we're, we're actually live streaming on the State of Wake Facebook page today. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is like what you guys are hearing by the way is like you're actually hearing the recording of the show that will be released on IPM Nation tomorrow night. Okay, and I got you it. are This is like a behind the scenes look at how they make the show. The awesome incredible show full auto with dimitri and paul are you ready dimitri because i i'm ready to just go to the first story here buddy i got our first uh first topic here first Start topic first topic is uh the name of the, the 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 title of the show is that a 308 in your pocket or are you just happy to see me well it might not be a 308 for long folks you might switch you might switch to the 6.5 Five, what is it? What is that called? The six point five Creedmoor? Is that right? No idea what Pre you're talking. Pretend about. you're on the freaking show. No idea what you're the, talking about. The, talking about can the six point five Creedmoor replace the three oh eight Winmag? It cannot. It cannot. Okay, next story. Is that, is that is that what we're gonna do? Yeah. Is that, we're just gonna go on. So, if you're, oh, oh, wrong way. Wrong way. Let's see. Are you got the article up? Do you got the article up? You can look at the article and read it out loud. Do you know how to read? Uh, Do you know how to read cognizantly, like in a way that other people understand when you're reading, not just the little tiny voice in your head? Let me ask you something. When you read, do you read? I bet you when you read, your lips move, don't they? You do. I do comments about moving lips. No. I like it. When you read, I bet you your, your lips move. Am I, am I correct? You are not correct. Actually. Oh, I think that I am correct. I've seen him read. And yes, his lips move. He's like, I mean, even it's like you can hear him like half speaking as he's reading because he can't manage to read without hearing the words in some way. Because, mm. you know, anyway, well, go ahead. Give it a try. Go ahead. Read part of the article there. Dive in. I'm not looking at anything. I'm waiting for you to get started. You Close don't have the freaking article up? No, I'm trying. What do you do? I do I always have to manage this show? Am I like the yeah. only person that actually cares about this show? Is it just me, Paul Gordon? I guess so, because you yeah, didn't even answer much. me. If you've researched short action rifles recently, you may have seen some rifles being offered in six point five Creedmoor. What can you tell me about that round? It sucks compared to the 308. Why does it suck? Why, it's just what? not. It's not as powerful. It doesn't transfer as much energy downrange. It shoots a little flatter for sure, but the 308 is a better cartridge. The 6.5 Creedmoor is clearly the better a ballistic cartridge of a better ballistic cartridge than the 308. Okay. Oh, burn! There oh, burn! The 308, yeah. the 308 was designed in 1962 for a semi-automatic military rifle, while the 6.5 Creedmoor was designed in 2007 for better long-range target performance out of a bolt-action rifle. Oh, you know what? I think that's a key here. I think yeah. that's a good caveat. They're talking about not just the 308 in uh, general. They're talking about for the bolt-action 
Not even the bolt action, dude. They're talking about target shooting. Target shooting for the bolt action. Dude, a twenty two is better than a three oh eight for target shooting. It's not a better cartridge though. So Well, uh the six point five pre-board. by the way, we're reading from American Shooting Journal dot com. And if you go to our Facebook page, Full Auto, you'll actually find a link to this article as well as to the video. But Jason, Jason says, Hi, this is Jason. They have a transcript of the video, and so I'm going to read a part of the transcript of the video, which basically says, If your friend Dimitri tells you that the 6.5 Creedmoor is not as good or worse than the 308, consider Dimitri's uh, gun credentials revoked. That's what it says. It literally says that. So here's the deal. The 308 is a better all-around cartridge for hunting, for semi-auto. As, as a hunting cartridge, Jason says, they're completely equal. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm loving Jason. All right. At, a, at 200 yards, the, the 308 has more power, about 200. The, the 308 is going to be a little heavier, but the Creedmoor. It transfers more energy. As better, it has better energy transfer. It has better um, knockdown power at 200 yards and 300 yards. Okay, listen. It, you you said it. You read it in the article. <laughs> it said it is a better target rifle. That, from yeah, a but bolt okay. Action. But now we're going and looking at the overall because so, apparently this is this is about the uh, the overall. So the now, overall. Okay, how many semi-autos uh, chamber that cartridge? What's that? How many semi-auto rifles chamber that cartridge? There's a couple. Okay. <laughs> There's a and, couple. And how much and how much ammo can you find online cheap? Oh, I I I'm I don't know. I'm betting that Squat. this is uh, not. Squat. Squat. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. it's a it's it's a, it's up there. It's it's a, it's, it's a wannabe it's... cartridge. It's it's trying to make a dent in the market. Like the 6.8 SPC, they're like, oh, well, you know, it's better than the, the 5.56. 5. It most certainly is ballistically better, but it's not a better cartridge. It, there, there are all these other reasons why the 5.56 5. is still better. You go with a heavier round, a higher grain cartridge in the 5.56, 5. and you have comparable performance. But the 5.56, 5. is there's plenty of ammo to be found. You're not going to find 6.8. SPCs readily. You're not going to find the Creedmoors readily. The ballistics are not anything to write home about compared to the 308. Uh, you get a little bit of a flatter shooter. You want to get to a to a cartridge that's better than the 308 and the 6.5 uh, Creedmoor, and this, the, I think it's the 6.5 Swede and all of those. You go to the seven millimeter 08 which is a slightly neck down version of the 308. You want a flat shooting cartridge? There you go. The 7mm 08 will dominate. Dominate! All the 6.5s and 6.8s and all of the 6.3s and all the other... Dude, it's a fad. So it's, it's a fad. fad. So so we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this down as... Uh, fad. We're going to say... That's a no. That's a no. If if you want to do long distance target shooting, you may want to consider the six point five. Correct. But other than that, folks, just wait a while. Just wait a while. There's a well, lot of reasons. The right? other there's other there's another reason to get the six point five, and that's if you want to spend a lot more money on ammo. Huh? Then that's a really good reason. Uh, unless you're hand loading, if you're hand loading, dude, the the difference still, isn't that the much. The brass, yeah, it is. I'm just reading the, what the dude said. You know what the dude is saying that that's not the case. The dude the is brass, saying if you hand load, it's not that different. Okay. It is different because the brass. You're lying. The now. cheapest brass now that you can find for the uh, 308 is way cheaper than the cheapest brass you can find for the 6.5. All righty. So, so there. So we're gonna we're 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 done with this. I'm sorry. I, I thought we were gonna actually. This is gonna be more of an exploration than it turned out to, to be. It's a sucky round. So it's a sucky round. Well, it's a sucky round. I a, I, I, round. I would like to hear other people's Wait. opinions on this. It, that it, that would also be a good round for my wife. She would like that round. 
because it a, doesn't have a lot of recoil. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a much lighter recoiling cartridge. So, like, if you have somebody who's recoil sensitive, you might go with that one. Right. So, so then why don't you like it? I don't get it because you're very recoil sensitive. You're sensitive overall. So, I like personally, I like to target shoot with my 300 Win Mag. So that's that's my bias. You like, uh, like you like the crack into the shoulder, right? I do. If, um, if you don't feel sore me, after shooting, then it's probably not good. No, it's not that. It's just that, you know, I I do enjoy the... It's almost like playing a punching game with your buddy. You know, when you pull the trigger on a 300 Win Mag, you know you're there shooting a gun. Yeah, you know it. You, you yeah, know that there. something's happening. Correct, and you're engaged in it in a very visceral way. You uh, you are one with the gun. You become one with, with the, the pain. gun. With the pain. With, with, the, with, the, with the pain, pain. yes. And, that, and that's what shooting's shoot, all about, folks. Three, shoot 100 rounds of very hot 300 Win Mag downrange, and, and you're not going to go home feeling spry and chipper. You're right. going to go home, and you're going to say, wow, I did something today. Something manly, you know, like splitting wood. You know, you're you're not gonna walk away from splitting wood and saying, "Oh, I feel re revitalized and re-energized and fresh." And, <laughs> now I'm know, ready to post on Facebook. Post. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, you're gonna, probably you're posting gonna, while you're splitting wood. You're like, "Look, I split this piece of wood." Ah. So, yeah, it's kind of that kind of experience for me. And you just don't get that with the have you have you fired the the six point five? No. No. So you don't know anything. So we're gonna leave it on that. Dimitri doesn't know anything. All he knows is that we're going to the next story because because uh, basically, if you're walking up to me, you should have a three hundred eight, not a six point five. And that's the end of that conversation. Or uh, look, if you're gonna go that route and you want something that shoots flat. Um, in a short action. <laughs> Excuse me, pollen's horrible right now. God bless you. Why, well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, get a 7 millimeter 08. It's the 308 parent cartridge that's necked down to a 7 millimeter. Sectional density is superior. Ballistics all around are superior. Muzzle energy is superior. Um, you could take big game with it, although... You know, you're pushing your luck with, uh, with like the big, big stuff like moose and elk and bears, but it's fantastic for black bear and anything down from there. So there you go. We leave you with a little hope after we crushed your 6.5 dreams. The next story we got is barricades and security cameras. Wrote that one. This is from. Huh? Kansas, Wait, KansasCity.com? Oh. Uh, Way to prepare there, Paul. Why can't uh, you write good articles like that, man? Why, 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 why can't, can't I write, write good articles like that? I don't know how to write. I don't even know how to read. So this says, with so more... When you, when you read, your lips move? I Like you're reading now and I can see your lips move. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Yeah, when I'm well, reading out loud so that others can hear it. I mean, we, we could you make think, this the show wait, 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 that the deaf would love. you think others are actually listening to this? There, There's at least one other person right now that's listening to yeah, this. That's, so. Yeah, that would be me. Oh, that's you. Okay, so nobody's listening to this. Wait, what happened to Jason? Did we lose him? Who's Jason? The guy who was commenting? Or was that you in your pen name? Oh, I didn't see it. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing comments or anything. It sucks. You said Jason said that you can get brass... Oh no no! Jason is uh, the uh, the guy in the art in the video. Oh, yeah no. yeah! Jason is the guy in the video. So you got zero viewership. <laughs> I have zero that's viewers, awesome. zero viewers right now. That's that's how I want to spend my nights. Actually, we have about show. we have about three thousand listeners, but uh, in my mind, with more gun store thefts, owners arm themselves, and it's a. Uh, Basically, it's a story of, uh, well, they're, they're talking about, in this case, uh, a guy who owns uh, Quicks Guns and Transfers in Kansas City, Kansas. And uh, he said, I have, 
I have, well, first he says, I have no more concern now owning a gun store than I did with a restaurant. <laughs> but the statistics show gun stores increasingly are becoming the targets of thieves. Last year, 558 burglaries of federally licensed gun dealers were reported nationwide, up nearly 50% from five years ago. So this well, you is, know why? You know why this is happening? I do not. Well, because the Obama administration isn't flooding the market with illegal guns to get into Mexico. And since Trump clamped down on the... No, no, but yeah, yeah, but this happened in 2016. Yeah, well, they stopped running guns to Mexico. What, in 20, 2015, man. So there you go. These poor bastards are running out of guns. Poor. You use the word poor loosely. Yeah, so, so, So the number of guns... Guns stolen in uh, gun store burglaries nationwide rose 73 percent to wow. 7,488 in 2016. That's, now, I mean, that's a pretty st significant statistic. And Missouri tied for eighth in the country with 14 burglars reported at federally licensed dealers. Quick had this warning for would-be burglars. If you do get into a gun store, you've opened a can of worms. Oh, with the ATF and the FBI. Come on. That's really your, 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 it's like, it's not like you're stealing candy, you know? So people that do that are at a much greater, that, that's really his response. Your response as a gun owner, a gun dealer is, is uh, that the government's going to government's going to get you. Yeah. You, you better fear the government. I mean, yeah, they, you know, the government's going to show up like, you know, three weeks from now. Maybe. Three weeks later and say, hey, maybe, where may, are your maybe, guns? Maybe find you. Right. Exactly. So, so yeah, several burglaries occurred in Kansas area in the past several months. On Thursday, three people, okay, I don't care about three people being caught in taken into custody, whatever. So, uh, so, so, I mean, as I read this article, on one hand, the gun, owned, the gun dealer is like, no, man. No, we ain't, we ain't more of a risk than anybody else. And the, the reporter, whoever the reporter is, no, it's horrible. It's arm. It's it's the end of the world. I'm not sure if the, I mean how how we how we talk about this because we could talk about it from the angle of how the media is covering this. It's uh, it's I'd say it's almost like they're gloating, you know. Na 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 na. na. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe trying to put the fear of God in any, uh, future would be, uh, gun dealers, uh, who might want to consider opening a shop. You don't want to do that, man. It's death out there. But man, Mr. Gun Dealer, when you're being interviewed, the response is not, now you, your government's going to get you. Don't, don't do it. Don't rob those stores. When he said you open up a can of worms, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be good. This is, oh, I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be. It's gonna be, you get the ATF and you. Oh, my gosh. You get the ATF and the FBI after you. You know, I don't know. If I have a feeling that my home might be at risk, I'm probably not going to send a message out that, well, you know, if you do that, that will be against the law. And the law will be really mad at you and come after you. It's probably not. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you. Maybe that's how you well, roll. The, uh, the question is, who who were the guys that they caught? What were they up to? Were they just interested in selling these guns on the black market? Were they left wing radicals? Were they, you know, skinheads? So this is 2016. These are probably not left wing radicals in 2016. Not then. But I bet you. Today, left-wing radicals are. are probably yeah. buying some 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 guns uh, off of Buy, the books. Buying, oh. buying some guns off the books, off the books. Oh. And not, yeah, exactly. They they'd be customers for the folks that are doing this type of, and I put this in air quotes uh, for this type of business. But I don't think that they were doing that back in 2016. I, I mean, I and these are the type of statistics you won't see them. I won't see 2017 statistics till like February, March, thereabouts of next year. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if it's if it's either if it stays the same from from you know the increase that you've already seen, or if it, if it goes up even more. But but yeah, who who are the customers? 
in 2016. What's going on there? I I I I don't. I mean, in 2016, it could very well be right wing groups as well. Right. Who in were, 2016, who were concerned because it because it certainly looked like Hillary was gonna win. Right. Let's be honest. We got to get ours, but dude, I don't have the cash, so let's find a different way. Yeah, let's find a different way. Uh, and now, I mean, man, I don't know, but 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 you see the the picture that they have is they've got these the the the, the gun shops. They're 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 putting barricades and all dude, every gun and... shop that I know has the windows barricaded. <laughs> I don't know what these guys are. Johnny come lately's what. Oh no! They got like uh, in front of their building. They got some sort of like uh, uh, Jersey barriers. I don't know if what if that's what they're called, but you know, it looks like the you know in Iraq the green zone, those green zone type barriers, and they're like, yeah, it's like this is my gun store. It's a green zone barrier, but at the same hand, I'm gonna threaten you with the ATF. <laughs> I I imagine if you're you know that's a, I wonder I don't, I don't know the maybe you know the answer do. When you're in a gun shop, an employee, you're selling guns, do you have to go through training to make sure that you know how to use a gun in a bad situation? You don't have to go through training. Wow. No... I, I would think, man, if I, if I, if and when I open up my gun shop, and it's coming, folks, it's coming. PG's, PG's guns and gear, it's coming. When I open up that shop, I'm just going to tell you, if you want to work for me, you're going to have to be well-trained. And know how to use that gun in a bad situation. That's what I'm saying. Or you right? could just hire veterans. Well, not all veterans are the same. Not all veterans have the same type of training. So Well that's... no, you're not gonna you're not gonna hire a veteran who was in the chow hall. I'm talking yeah, I mean, people <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my brother's a veteran, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And he's oh, not yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. he, he buys he buys helmets. Not Enough guns. Said. Helmets. Enough said. Enough, Enough, said. Said. Enough said. We don't even um, no. We we won't even let him on this show. Sorry. Uh, you want you want people veterans who were you know eighty second airborne rangers you know uh, Delta Force those guys some experienced folks that yeah so when they hear a pop they're not gonna duck they're gonna draw you know the right. moment they see a gun they're not going to say oh what do I do now they're, they're gonna they're not gonna, they're gonna fumble be moving and... into... right yeah they're not gonna fumble stumble bumble and all the mumbling that oh wow that, that rhymes that's cute oh really thank cute. you thank you stumble I... bumble fumble wow yep stumble bumble fumble baby you don't want to stumble bumble fumble that's for sure so i i mean i don't know if this is a trend that's on its way up or if it's a spike but certainly i'm i'd be I, i'd be interested to talk to let me some local uh gun it's shops. going to continue yeah, my prediction is that this is going to continue mm -hmm. um, because I think uh, people are – I think there's uh, a collective – I don't want to use the word collective – a common understanding that things are getting bad. And you watch the news from Europe and how the Europeans have created very strict gun laws and – you have immigrant elements and local elements um, that are taking advantage of that. I mean, people are getting beaten up. I mean, look at what happened in California this week. A group of 40 teenagers got on the trains and started beating people up and robbing them. Oh, Dude. yes. I had that on yeah. our list. I didn't think I would have, I, way down on the list. But. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen that happen in Texas. Well, in California... You know that if you're you're planning that, that the chances that you're going to have people that are carrying are 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 slim to none. And, and that kind of, right. uh, I mean, did they have guns? The forty. Well, this is what the left would tell you. Well, well, you know, no one died in the situation. You know, you, you don't want to kill these kids. You know, they might become doctors and lawyers and stuff. Just because they're on a bad path right now doesn't mean they can't be reformed and become, you know good members of society we, we need to reach out to these kids that's the left's idea of right and wrong mine's a little different mine's a little you're gonna beat me up to take my stuff yeah you're that's you're 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 risking of, you're risking killing me 
Yeah. Well, For my stuff. That, but I, I'm guessing it's going to escalate. Once you beat the crap out of me, uh, you're going to be emboldened and you're going to try something bigger and badder. Uh, to, to the point where at some point in your life, you're going to hurt somebody seriously or kill them. So my thinking is, if you're willing to do this to me now, I'm willing to take you out of the scene now so that you are not a problem later. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not thinking that far. All I'm thinking is you are a fundamental threat to me right here and right now. And therefore, I am going, you know, I, I think I've talked about this before. If if I feel like I, I'm not in danger. Right, you're going to walk away. Yeah, I'm going to walk away. I, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Even if it means losing my stuff, I would walk away. I, Correct. I don't want to kill somebody over my stuff, but 40 to 60 uh, uh, youths uh, that's surrounding me, that's a mob. I, I'm not going to wait around and guess what's going to happen. No, Correct. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start to open fire. That's right. And the, and the intellectual justification there is you, correct. You're going first and foremost, you're going to, um, defend your life and your well being. Uh, but, and I'm not, uh, how do you put this? I mean, the statement I made, I stand behind. Yeah. The action of defending your life at that point and your well being is probably saving someone else's life in the future if you take some one of them out yeah so, yeah um, I, I i i'm not going to entertain that thought i probably probably wouldn't even think of it at the time i bet you of course not I you're be, not going to think of it at the time you're going to think of it i'm thinking of it now before it happens like if my life is in danger the right thing to do is to neutralize that danger. Yeah, absolutely. And chances are, if that person put my life in danger, they've either put other people's lives in danger or they're going to continue to put people's lives in danger. So why not deal with them now? Yeah. And put an end to that threat. And and end it end it before it goes beyond where... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like, are you really... You know, if, if, yeah, if somebody does something violent to you and you want to have compassion and not... not not bring them to the justice that they deserve. You think that you're doing them a favor, and then they go out and do this but, to. Yeah, but you're not doing their vic their next. No, victim you're not doing their. That's, that's the point. Exactly, you're right. not. You're not doing their their next victim a favor at all. So, right. so yeah. It, uh, but but still, I think all in all, I'm 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 just probably not thinking that. I'm I am still going to be thinking. Is my life in danger? If it is, then I'm going to take action. If my life is not in danger, uh, uh, and if I have any question or doubt that my life might be in danger, I'm I'm going to err on the side of Paul caution. Uh, I I think for me that's a guide enough for me. I I, I just I'm not going to get into all the other the pre pre preemptive strike, which is kind of how I think you're you're going there no i'm i'm thinking of another incident that happened on a train uh years ago uh do you remember bernard getz i do yeah well he he uh he shot some fine fellows on the train who he felt were threatening his life with a screwdriver or two and he felt bad about having shot them and turned himself into the police and you know he was sued and he was convicted and he went to jail and he lost the lawsuits and the people who survived that attack because it really was an attack ended up throwing a pregnant girl off a 12 or 14 story building and you know that's just the icing on the cake they had done a lot of other things so it's a, to me it's unfortunate that he didn't complete the job and take all of them out because they were murderous fiends. Yeah, I'm I sorry. just, I, I, I just, I just don't know that. I don't know what each individual path is going to be. I mean, I could play the odds, but I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna root it primarily to is my life in danger? Okay, great. Well, not great, but great. okay, that not really good, great. Good choice of words. No, not great, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't want that birthday gift. Okay, 
and my birthday is coming up. Yeah. So somebody's like, hey, he thinks it's great if his life's in danger. <gasps> I knew the perfect gift for him. No, yeah. no, don't do that. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm just going to go down to if my life is in danger or if, if I feel like I'm threatened, then I'll be threatened. But taking it back to the California story itself, you have a largely... You know, I, I don't know if you have a population that's as unarmed as California thinks it is. But even if you're armed, you know you have an... Even if you aren't armed and you know you have an illegal weapon, you're much less likely to use... Uh, when I, I'm going to put that in quotes. Illegal uh, weapon. You, you're, you're, you're much uh, less likely to use it. Because you know, once you use it, even if you're totally justified, you're... You're in some California voodoo that that you don't want to uh, be in. You, you, they're going to get the, their claws into you and make an example. Oh yeah, of yeah, you. yeah. It's like uh, I have I have friends that live in California. And they say, you know, California, it's a lot freer than than Pennsylvania in a lot of ways. Uh, it's just this, the gun thing, which is bad. But you know, that's not a problem because you know, a lot of people have guns. They're like, okay, that's great. You have a gun. But use it once and see see what happens if you use a gun that you're not supposed to have. Good luck right. with that. And, they, well, and they, it's just a, it's another excuse for the state to get its claws into you. Yep. And just, to suck money out of you in the judicial system. Yeah. So so those those folks sitting on that train. I mean, really, if if you if you knew that you lived in a in a place where you could expect twenty five, thirty, forty percent, however many. Uh, people to be carrying are you are you going to execute uh, a plan with 40 to 60 kids to basically collectively rob a train i mean when they say kids what are, what are we talking about we're we talking like nine-year-olds no we talking teenagers like 18, starting teen, about 18 year olds yeah you're talking about late teens early late late teens early 20s that that kind of grouping there yeah i mean this they had to they had to have worked this out, folks. <laughs> this is a coordinated effort. But 30 kids? Are you kidding me? 30 kids can't agree to where to go play basketball. Right. That's what I'm saying. They had to work can't it out. Agree, can't agree on, you know, n name it, on uh, on what rules they're going to play, you know, freaking hoop or soccer or for all that. Fun. Right. Yeah. So there had to be some leadership. Uh, behind this, some yeah, I don't get and actually dynamic. some some impressive leadership that got thirty kids to coordinate well together and operate efficiently, get in and get out in an efficient manner. I mean, were these manner. kids skinheads who were organized under a, a skinhead banner? Were they inner city kids who were organized under like a Black Lives Matter banner? Were they Latinos who were like? You know, protesting the anti, you know, shut the border stuff. Were they people with gender identity issues who were fed up and decided to go attack people? I mean, what kind of kids are we talking about here? Any clues? Well, you made me Google it. And now I'm looking it up. And this is I'm I'm on San Francisco. Dot CBS local dot com. So it's passengers on a Bay Area rapid transit train were robbed. Well, we know that story. Uh, police said witnesses report 50 to 60. They just call wow. them juveniles. They jumped the fare gates and they get onto the platform. And then after boarding the train, the juveniles committed multiple strong arm robberies of bags and cell phones. At least two people were hurt and were treated by paramedics. Bart said... There had been similar robberies on trains the day. Whoa. Similar robberies on trains in the days prior to this incident with juveniles running onto trains and quickly fleeing, but not with as many people. Holy moly. So this is. A, so it was a building up. They're like, hey, man, I, it's building I up. I got me a new phone. You want one? Bart spokeswoman uh, said there was a total of seven robberies on the train. We had one purse, one duffel bag, and five cell phones stolen. No weapons were reported. Now I'm assuming that that wasn't from the robbery with 40 to 60 kids, whatever. Because I gotta say, if if all they got was that, that was not a good, 
not 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 a good effort. Uh, the teens all fled into the surrounding neighborhood near the Coliseum before any officers could arrive. See, I don't know in that case. If they're coming on uh, quickly and they're doing the... I, I don't know. I don't know that I would have engaged at that point. You're surrounded by a bunch of people. You're just as likely to shoot somebody else. Uh, I mean, if these guys had... If they were brandishing weapons, uh, I don't know. I probably would have just given them my stuff, truthfully. I think in that situation. I mean, if they would have come in like really organized. It doesn't sound like that. It sounds like they they just basically did a mad dash raid and each one of them picked a victim. Said, give me your money. Blah, blah, blah. I would just hand it over. Unless they were, you know, it doesn't look like they were brandishing guns. So I, I, I don't think I would have uh, taken my gun out. Yeah. And you're uh, in a train. You honestly, and you're you in a honestly train. Honestly, don't know what you would do in a situation. Well, no, no. I'm I'm talking uh, intellectually. I'm not talking right. I, obviously we don't know what we'll do in that situation, but looking at it from outside of that of the of the of the cauldron of passion, I'll say. I I I I think that I would probably keep my gun right where it was. I don't think that I would Yeah. I, I don't think necessarily carrying would have helped me one way or another in that situation. They they would have gotten my cell phone and my wallet. I could just as easily have killed somebody else as, as, as much as them in, in a crowded train. Not being a highly trained professional. You're, yeah. you're, you're going silent. You're still thinking I'm shooting. Yeah. You want my cell phone? Okay, here. Let me get it out of my holster for you. <laughs> Are you going to say that? Yeah, of course. Uh, you're going to say that. Let me get it out of my holster for you. Clue! Clue! <laughs> Hold on. Let me get my gun. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, look, that guy who shot those three teens who were part of that home invasion, he did the world a favor. Oh, I, th those kids came in. I mean, in that situation, you're you're not where a bunch of crowd and they, they they had weapons and they were be and they were coming into your home so yeah that's that's a to, that's a whole other level up from just invading a train i mean invading right. a train's bad but invading your home that's like mm -mm. Uh, i just yeah next level stuff if you're going to invade my home don't worry about the atf and don't worry about the fbi because probably not going to need them no. They're probably not going to be involved in this situation. Well, they will at, at the investigation afterwards. Now, nah, that'll probably Possibly. be a local police matter. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Good <laughs> ain't, point. Ain't gonna be a, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a local police matter. And, uh, and a coroner will be involved, probably. Most likely, yes. Most likely. <laughs> so, Most likely, yeah. So, you would still consider shooting in that situation? Oh, shit, yeah. Are you kidding me? Surrounded by a bunch of folks. Yeah. And you're uh, carrying, I mean, uh, I mean, do, 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 are, are you, are you, I mean, you're carrying FMJs, you're carrying hollow points. Something like that. I mean, yeah. if, if you're carrying just hollow points, maybe, but if you're carrying a mix or just FMJs, I mean, your, your penetration is a, a lot more likely. So now you're talking about folks behind them. That's usually the wall of the train that would be behind them. No, That's... no, they they went into a, a, a people in, in the train. So you I mean, how was this train packed? I don't see the train as being packed with people. I see it like uh, what I visualize is a normal subway train where you go, you sit down, and you know people walking around and sitting, and some standing. I mean, if some guy gets in your face. And demands things of you. Um, I might, my hand's going to be on my gun. Oh yeah, my hand will be on my gun right away. But am I pulling it out? I don't think I am. But I, I might. I don't know. I'm, I, pardon me. I could, I could say, you know, screw this. My life is in danger. I don't know whether it is or isn't. In this case, these guys didn't. Didn't. I mean, they obviously didn't hurt anybody. Uh, too badly, so they weren't terribly aggressive, but you wouldn't know that. You couldn't know that. Dude, they weren't terribly aggressive. 
Dude, well, compared they to what they could have been. Pocketbooks and and uh, compared to what they could have been. I mean, they could have just shot people in the head. I don't know. They didn't have guns, or or it says they didn't have guns. I don't know if they if they if they did or didn't. But you know what? If they didn't have guns, you know what, folks? See, you don't need guns to terrorize. You don't. Are you are you playing this? Yeah, are, you, yeah. are you playing the show? Could you mute that or turn the... Yeah, that took it off. I got... I, I got daft, man! Are you bloody daft is what you... are. Oh. So we're going to go into the next story. I think we're done with this. Yeah, we kind of beat that horse to death. I don't think we beat it to death. I think we ended it at just the right time. So now we're moving on to... Uh, Smith and Wesson and Ruger. So that's not Smith and Wesson and Ruger. That's Smith and Wesson and Ruger. Rise as FBI gun checks surge in March. That's right. As a, as the article, this is from The Motley Fool, and it starts off, the article says, Well, so much for the theory that a gun-friendly president in Congress would shut down gun sales. I don't think that's a full reality there. I think that... Yeah. There's a reason why gun sales are going back up. And I think it has to do with February and, and March and April and, and January. The activity in, in January, February, and March, which... What, what kind of activity are you talking about? I'm talking about, I'm talking about riots and, and protests and, and the rhetoric now coming from the left, which is, it's... I mean, full disclosure, folks, I didn't vote, so I don't have a dog in this fight, okay? I have reason not to like anybody, <laughs> but what's coming from the left is basically if you even think that you like Donald Trump, you're a Nazi, and you should be, you, you, you should be destroyed. Yeah, you should be neutralized. Your business should be wiped out. You should be done with. You should, you're not even a conversation to be had with you. Screw the election. The, the Russians fixed it. You're you're illegitimate. Your president is illegitimate, and it's fair game. It's open season on all Trump supporters, even even people who just voted for him who aren't really huge Trump supporters. They just well, who do I vote for? I vote for the crazy man, or do I vote for the known murderer? I think a lot of people said, "Hey, let's give the crazy man." I'm not saying he really is crazy i'm just saying for a lot of people they actually that's kind of the choice they thought they had so they chose the quote-unquote crazy man instead of the quote-unquote murderer but even those folks they're they're marked for death they're marked for ruination it's it's a zero-sum game now with the left they're not going quietly into that good night and yeah i think that's why the gun sales are going back up i think uh if you didn't have that then then the fact that you had a gun-friendly president and Congress, yeah, I, I think the gun sales would have went down. And I wish they had gone down, truthfully, because well, guns would be at, cheaper and ammo yeah, but, would be cheaper. Yeah, but if you look at uh, California, New Jersey, Connecticut, New York, they're just tightening up their gun laws. They're making it even harder. So a, a gun-friendly president, that's to be seen, really gun friendly congress yeah that, that's a great point too that's to be seen i mean a lot of places are hunkering down and getting even more um regulated so uh i mean the nra is suing california now for its ban on quote unquote assault rifles and assault styled rifles right i mean there's still there's still a culture in america that is hell bent on denying people the right to defend themselves, so I am not—I am not at all um, content or complacent. Yeah, about... I, I, I don't feel secure. I don't. No, no. I, no, no, when it comes to my guns, and you know, honestly, I don't feel secure when it comes to my guns. Not that I have guns because I lost them all in a boating accident. But I'm you thinking, too. I, yeah, me too. On the you, Great Lakes. Well, yes. Holy crap. There? I don't know if it was this. Was it a dark and stormy night? Yes. It was a it dark was... and stormy night. I think your boat hit my boat. 
That's you fucker. <laughs> your that's... boat hit my boat. That's probably what happened. That water was cold. Or your boat hit my boat. I think uh, that's probably. I, 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 I actually remember now some stupid Greek fisherman hit me. That's you. This makes sense. Well, you know, the, look, a stupid Greek fisherman does better on the water than a troglodyte. I'm, so, I, I am an opier, okay? I am not so, a troglodyte. So I, you, uh, you, you species, you species, species man, and speciesism species is, is actually worse we than were, racism. We were one of the founding groups in Europe that annihilated your ancestry. You didn't annihilate us. We're still here, buddy, and we're coming back. We're coming here, back strong. We're coming back swinging, and we want our stuff back, back. You're coming back at four percent. Uh, yeah, yeah, four percent, man. We're gonna I be. Have a, you know what? Procreate, baby. Procreate. Procreate. Dude. Procreate. The part of Greece I'm wow. from. Wow. When I do this, I get a green green haze going, whoa, baby. baby. <sighs> you can't see so, it because you're seeing the uh, non non. So the part version. of Greece that I'm from tends to have more than 4% troglodyte in their DNA. So I'm very curious. I'm going to do a DNA test this summer. Might you be... One of the more OPs. Of OP, more of an OP than you. I don't think that's possible. Yeah, I, dude, I'll probably be like four point three and a half percent. If you are, I will. <laughs> but see, I don't embrace. I'll be my very troglodyte. bothered by that. I won't. I don't embrace my troglodyte. You do. I see, you I are, embrace my OP original no, people. You. I want my you reparations. Identi you identify as OP. No, no, I am OP, son. You identify. Son, no, no, son, I am, I am OP. Well, if you were, what, where's your loincloth and your spear? That is speciesism. You don't think that we have evolved and we have advanced? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, where's your loin and your spear? Because your people had that too, so. Yeah. Yeah, your people didn't invent stuff. They got stuck with spears and loincloths, and then we came in and eradicated you. So I'm going to bring us back to the story because oh, of, do that? Because of so your lying fun. eyes. Because of your lying eyes and your whore mouth, lying whore mouth. Okay. And matter of fact, you should really think about shutting so that the lying bottom line. Over. The bottom line is we both lost a lot on that boating accident. But if we had guns, we would if. not feel secure because you know what? If you if you want to own if you want to carry your gun around in Pennsylvania, is that where you're from? Yeah, you want to carry your gun around in Pennsylvania? Guess what? Got to ask Daddy for permission. So how long is that going to be? Like, when are they going to decide? You know what? Mm, nah, nah. Then you're going to have to carry illegally or not carry at all. So. And and as for Trump being gun friendly, I haven't seen, to be seen I haven't seen Donald Trump say peep one about guns. He's he's not making any effort whatsoever, well, not talking at all. Nobody is. Nobody is talking about the grand plans that they have with this national concealed carry thing. Look, nobody's even Trump, talking about it. Instead, Trump, you got Jared Kushner. Who is yeah. now like like the the lead, you know, he he's he he truly is a progressive. And he is he is he's taken the lead in the Trump office. He's kicking people out, cutting people's heads off, metaphorically, of course. And so is Donald Trump gun friendly? Mm, you're gonna find well, out. Well, the the New York Democrat uh, who is now our president and who had been a New York Democrat for forever. Uh, it's a wait-and-see game because, I mean, he talked very candidly about so many issues, and, and he was, like, you know, blunt about things. So the Armenian Genocide, uh, you know, the mem uh, memorial for genocide in general takes place, and what does he say about the Armenian Genocide? Well, it was a... Horrible tragedy. Hor it? Horrible tragedy. It was a horrible tragedy. Call it for what it was. But no, he's playing the political game. And so he said tragedy instead of genocide. That's the key correct, word, which is Which is the key to keeping good relations with Turkey, who is stabbing us in the back at every opportunity. And has been for some time. But 
Yeah, what are, what I don't want to piss them off. Yeah, for having murdered 1.5 Armenians and another 1.5 uh, and other Christians like right. Greeks and Assyrians and so yeah, wh forth. What, what, what I'm seeing from Donnie is, and this is relevant. The reason I'm saying this is relevant because this is, this is related to this claim. You got a gun friendly president. I got, I, you, you see a guy who came in metaphorically guns blazing, really making some serious waves and slowly, but surely he is starting to normalize and, and not and, and not in a good way he's yeah. starting to normalize and remember this folks even during the election even during that that debate that i'll say that wonderful debate uh not because i like donald but because hmm, hillary oh watching her get her comeuppance ah oh! so when he said you know the the, the debate where <laughs> She was talking about being in the White House, and he's not going to be in the White House. He says, yeah, because if, if I was, you'd be in prison. Oh, I love that. It's still one of the great moments in, in human history, really. But uh, And I'm being a little bit uh, so uh, why isn't she? hyperbolic. But, but that guy is is softening. And during that debate, here's, oh, yeah, no, no, why isn't she? During that debate, Donald Trump was asked about the no-fly, no-buy. And that is where you, I mean, you got conservatives that actually support the no-fly, no-buy because, you know, law and order. Uh, he supports that. He supports the idea that if you end up on this list that you, you, you've never been, had an opportunity to present your case. Half the time, you don't even know you're on the list until you try to do something that the list says you can't do. Uh, it, it, this is the star chamber. And the Star Chamber, by the way, for those who don't know, it's it's kind of when they have proceedings against you that you 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 don't even have a right to defend yourself. That's that's essentially what this is. And this guy supports that. Now, I am telling you that a man that supports no fly, no buy, no buy, has a fundamental lack of understanding of the basic human reality of self defense. You call it human right, I'll call it human reality, and. That's that's what you're dealing with. And I think more and more folks are going to begin to realize that they're dealing with the New York Democrat, the New York Democrat. And so maybe, you know, maybe that's also in part why it is that the gun 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 sales are going back up because the New York Democrat isn't coming out strong like he promised. You know, there's 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 no big national referendum to to have a a constitutional carry. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything. They're talking about. I mean, first, first they did the health care, and what that what, failed. What the heck? I mean, health care no. was like Paul Ryan replaced the the government mandate tax with a corporate collected tax. That's essentially what he did. So he changed the mandate from the government collects the tax to the corporation collects the tax. But you can bet that if you don't pay the corporation, the government is, is going to be the one that shows up to enforce that you didn't pay so, that. Okay, so he, repealing Obamacare, they're going to try to review this back in September. Uh, getting funding for the wall looks like a... We're, we're going to build it now, and then Mexico's going to pay for it later. Mm. Yeah, well, no one's funding the wall now. Oh, no, no, because Paul, Paul Ryan won't fund the wall. Well, no. they, they threatened to shut the government down. Right. So he had to back off of that. What else is he backing off of? The well, three aircraft carriers that were heading to Korea. They're, 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 to they're, Korea. They're, they're, they're there for China. They're not there for Korea. NATO is obsolete. Well, now that I've talked to the people at NATO, I see that it's not obsolete. Right. Um, but what else? I'm going to bring in Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon, whatever you think of Steve Bannon, that guy means to win a bloody war against the progressives. I'm going to bring him in. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to bring my son-in-law, too. You know what? Uh, my son-in-law doesn't like him. I'm going to get rid of him. I'm going to keep my son-in-law. Yeah, Jared. Uh, your son-in-law is a uh, lefty. You, yeah, yeah. basically, the, the White House has turned into Jared's world. It's Jared's world. So, yeah, that's and, – and normally we don't go this much detail when we're talking about Trump and politics, but it's absolutely relevant to this story. This is this is in addition to the the rhetoric coming from the left, the, the, the riots, 
the protest, uh, the battle for Berkeley. Yeah. No wonder people are still buying guns. And it really bums me out because I, I don't have a dog in that fight, really. But I do. You do. But it my bum dog is this. My dog is simple. I want a very pro Second Amendment administration to come in so that people stop buying guns and they become cheaper for me to buy. Well, yeah, I'm for that. Anything that that's gets the dog. guns cheaper, that's all. Yeah. That then, then I can start. You know, I can replace the gun collection that I lost, and I can not only buy guns that I need, but fun guns. Like I can that you get. Want. Like I want to get. You know, what the heck do I need this for? I want the double barrel 1911. No need for that. That's yeah, a that's silly gun. Silly. That's, that's totally stupid. It is. Stupid. It is a stupid, God. stupid, stupid. It is definitely, it 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 it's it's it, it, it's it's definitely. Uh, so the one thing I could say about it's, the it's a range toy. The, the one nice thing that they've done recently is they've decided to go back to the nine millimeter, so you can effectively get forty cal ammo and forty cal firearms for, I don't know, ten to twenty percent cheaper than the nine millimeter counterpart. Because no one's buying 40 cal anymore. And 40 cal is such a superior cartridge over the 9mm. It's not even funny. Yeah. I, if and when I ever replace my gun collection, I right. have, you know, 40, also 10. So 10 is good. 10 is, 10 is good. 40 is, 10 is good. 40 is good. Actually, no, 10 is good. 10 is, 40 is good. 10 is gooder. Ten, I was going to say 10 is gooder. 10 is gooder. 40 is good. 10. But 10. Ten, Ten is, is gooder. Good. Ten is most assuredly gooder. So I, I, we're we're just about out of time here. We got. You know, I'm, I I've realized that my my vocabulary and the manner with which I speak has improved dramatically since I've been surrounded by six, seven, eight, and nine year olds. Gooder, <laughs> gooder is. I would never even know that was a word until then. Dude, look it up. No, I I know it because I've been surrounded by six, seven, eight year old, nine year olds, and they've they've educated me. And then there's good error. Well, you don't That's... throw that word around lightly, okay? No, you don't. That is reserved for like, like like peanut butter and marshmallow sandwich. That's good error. <laughs> See, that's oh, marsh marshmallow too. spread. Marshmallow spread. No, I'll tell you how you do with, it. With with banana on it. I tell you how you do it. You don't First know anything about down. food. First, you put down butter. Oh, but oh yes. Then you put down the peanut butter. Oh, you got it. You got then it. Then you put a chunk of butter in the middle. Yeah. Then you put the jelly down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This then is. Then you. Yeah. Then yeah. you close the thing. Yeah. With the two pieces of bread. Yeah. Preach it. Preach it. And then you take a nice bite. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You get some cut. juicies. That is some oh, juicies. Man. And the best jelly. I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody says. Grape. Jelly. Absolutely. I concur. One hundred percent grape jelly. Strawberry jelly tastes like my shoe. It's got a funk to it. Don't ask me why. It does. Strawberry's got a funk to it. Not not strawberries, but strawberry jelly has jelly. a funk to it. It's got a Absolutely. funk to it. Uh grape jelly is just superior. It's also strawberry jelly is like all like pity and weird and textured. Yeah. And I don't like that. I like it. Smooth. Grape jelly, Smooth. oh man, with butter and peanut butter, yeah. chunky peanut butter. Oh yeah, oh chunky. man. So butter with chunky peanut butter. Man, I got acid reflux, but dang it, I yeah. I don't know. It's worth it. And <laughs> it's, grape jelly. It's worth it's worth the pain, man. It's worth oh, the man. pain. That is that is, and you got to do a triple decker. Triple decker. Oh. Yeah. I'm just I'm just adding to this. This Dude, is that is survival food. If that like, is gooder right there. That is that, if you haven't reached that level, don't be using the word gooder. So think of that sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> right. That is something else. That's what you do. Okay. Uh, I, so are we gonna end our we're, show we're on done. survival food? Well, we just did. Because <laughs> I survived on that food for a long time. Oh man, I made me some PBJs, man. I made me some serious PBJs, and PBJs is cheap too. 
See, that's the thing. It's cheap food. That's why it's survival food. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can you can get by with PBJs. I know I know a couple of people that lost their jobs recently. PBJs, dudes. PBJs. And if you're listening, customers. you know who you are. Sounds like my customers. Your customers lost their jobs. A lot of them. Well, during the recession, they did. Yeah, a lot of people getting their jobs back, and they're getting good jobs. Actually, that that's that, the thing. That's which they're is they're getting gooder jobs. They're, back. They're not gooderer. Just gooder. Just gooder. <laughs> just, gooder, just gooder. gooder. Not gooder. Not like B, B, and no, J, triple gooder, butter. Son. It is no, gooder. It's gooder, but it's not gooder. For sure. So we're, we're done here. We are done. We have uh, we have punched this puppy in the head. We have made this show. We've become one. You're a sick fuck. You're punching puppies? It's a metaphor. It's not literal. Don't. Don't. don't dude, bitch. don't give people ideas. Dude. You know, punch this puppy in the head. It's a phrase. It means you get this done. You got this done. You get this done only, in a only hurry. Only a troglodyte. We, would troll, we, we, a... we, we push through the shock it's... and all and got it done. I reject your troglodyte ver- vocabulary. Uh, I reject your labels and I replace them with my own. OP, baby. OP. You are, you are identifying as OP. I see that. No, I am OP. I am OP. I don't I don't want you to play the Rachel the Lotso card with me, okay? I'm not like a pretend black person. I am a real OPer, okay? I'm not Rachel. I'm not the Rachel the Lotso of the OP. Who world. is the politician who pretended to be a Native American? Oh, what that Elizabeth Warren. I oh, I'm, I'm oh. also not the Elizabeth Warren of the OP. I'm I'm not a, I'm not a fake uh native or what the heck? I, I don't know. Is it Native American, American Indian? What are you supposed to call folks? I don't know. Usually, there should be like an update. Like, okay, this is the correct language to use this year, because it changes <laughs> this year. This year, this is the correct language you share. Maybe I should learn AP style. I think AP is up with all that stuff. You don't even know what AP style is. It's okay. Just keep talking. It's Just a journalistic style on. where Just, you put what, the most important stuffs at the beginning and you. And you filter through less and less and less and less pertinent stuff. No, AP style is just the the the, the type the words that you use for certain things. The like if you're if you if you mention dates and times, you have a certain format. It's like a uniform way so that all news looks the same and sounds the same. That sounds kind of creepy, actually. I don't know. It's ex- that is exceptionally creepy. It is, as I say, and I'm like, whoa, there's yeah. a thing that that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, people because, are using it. That's a so creepy thing. So once people get used to that style, no matter what kind of lies you throw at them, oh, it's, I recognize it's this. It's in that. This, it's it's in style. It's like when 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 you read police reports. Uh, I run a newspaper, so I read the police reports, and they have a they have their own style, and it's very, you know, the individual. Then, then uh, the, the individual the struck struck the alleged victim. Upon the face with a closed fist. With an alleged closed fist. The, well, I didn't say alleged. It doesn't go that bad. But it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's high-handed, like, you know, it's like pseudo-intelligent, uh, sanitized language. Kind of like the OPs. Pseudo-intelligent. Oh. Oh, you and I, we're going to have some words after the show, son. And you know yeah. what? We're going we're gonna to have ourselves like a quick game of Jeopardy. This monkey is going to I'm going to put you crap. down. This I'm gonna put you. Gonna in, I'm gonna put you down. Throw, this monkey's gonna throw turds at your op like you have not seen before. Okay, who, who's okay? Uh, the bro, the uh, uh, cubism, uh, Pablo Picasso, and who cares? Come on, who who the, 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 cares the, about dead art forms? The answer is George Brock. The answer is George Brock, ladies and gentlemen. Brock, Anyone with the least the bit of no, he's Picasso. also was a douchebag. Both of them, fine artists, fine Oh my artists. gosh, do you know anything about Picasso, his personal life? Oh no, he's a total troll in real life. I mean, he's a, he's a not Dude. a good guy. Not a good no. guy. Not a good guy. I don't know Brock <laughs> po- personal. Yeah, are we, are we actually going to end the full auto show talking about Brock and Picasso? Well, you just to browbeat you, to shame modernist, you. The modernist bullshit. That, that, that. What, what? They're, 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 they're they're cubists, man. Their their art forms were dead before they started. Their forms were not dead before they started. Yeah, they were. Well, I disagree with you, man. I totally disagree with you. Nobody did with Picasso and Brock did until they did it. And what did they do? 
Well, they took Paul Cezanne and they uh, they extended it. They they went where he didn't go, man. Who they, cares? They took him further. So, so Picasso. Oh my gosh, our full audio audience is like, what the? Yeah. Heck? Okay. Let let me get this out. Let me get this out. All right. So, technology replaces people in documents. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So these guys. Paint is that, dead. It is, a, it is a dead art form. It's, Paint is dead. Hey, 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 they anything. did collages and they integrated newspaper clippings. They were they were uh, up uh, with uh, it, uh. man. Well, because what, what else were they going to do? It became, art used to be communicating important ideas about your culture to the world. And then when these painters couldn't do that anymore because photography and cinematography replaced them, oh gosh, I did, I did. Uh, they had to. It, it became hey, about the hey, expression. What, when Dimitri mentions the word "gun," wake me up. It was about their expression. Oh my gosh! Oh my. Oh gosh, my God! Oh they my were gosh. so expressing. Hey, what, double barrel, 1911. Double barrel, folks. Double barrel, 1911. Yeah. Let's end it on that note. Do you have any uh, last words? I don't know what to say to that. To Double Barrel 1911? Oh, man. Really? <laughs> that's, what, that's what we've come to? Double Barrel 1911? Are you kidding right. me? Just to recap, if you want something that's going to shoot flatter than the 308, get the 7 millimeter 08. Yeah, don't, 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 don't mess around with that 665 thing. If you if you're thinking about a 6.8 SPC over a 556, it is a superior cartridge. Good luck finding the ammo at a rate that you can afford. Um, yeah, and, and in, 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 in an in an yeah, in an SHTF uh, situation, yeah. good luck finding correct. And if you want a harder hitting 556, five, uh, you can get 60 and 70 uh, grain bullets that are exceptionally good cartridges or good uh, rounds. So, you know, I, I'm not the kind of guy who likes to go with the status quo. I, I like to get something a little different. But in a shit hit the fan situation. Yeah, I went I, calm and I went calm. I'm on my 5.56 five, and my 308 and my 30 odd 6. And my 40 and my 9. Correct. Yeah, and my 12 gauge. Got to have my 12 and, gauge. And I am now becoming a huge fan of semi-auto pistols that chamber the 357 magnum not sig magnum right magnum folks oh man is that a conan is that kunin c-o-o -O yeah yes a kunin which has apparently been around for for a while and uh, it's kind of been revised recently i want them to make a double stacked a double, double stacked stack 357 stack. magnum yeah in the 1911 yeah, Hick Hick Hickok 45, I think, has a video. Dude, a lot of guys have videos on that. Yeah, but Hickok 45 is awesome. Yeah, a 357 Magnum coming out of a 6-inch barrel of a 1911. That is just... That, that will hurt you. That, that will like, leave a mark. That's That's like taking the prettiest Scandinavian girl and combining her with the prettiest Latina. And just like wow, wow! Look at that. Yeah, that is that is. That's you know what you know what it you know what it is that yeah. type of that that platform with that round. It's gooderer. Oh, oh, that is an appropriate use of that car that word. See? See? It is gooderer. My my vocabulary is improving. It is good so, thing you now know me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. So, what? Well, vocabulary is now gooder. <laughs> it is gooder. It's a lot gooder than it used to be. <laughs> All right. Dude, yeah. We beat this I think we're done. Death. So, uh, yeah. you got any, uh, you know, uh, little uh, Greek uh, world uh, closing remarks? I've got nothing. Come on. Kalinichtarepedia. Which means? Good night. You. Kalinikta Lepevia. Oh, so it's, it's dudes. It's not not yeah. not talking to females too, because we do have female viewers. Because you uh, met me. You... Repevia is bring in the eye candy right here, right here. Right here. Re right. is a abbreviation of more, which is moron. Which Sorry, is ladies. Insult. This is marriage. Marriage. It's, it's marriage. infant minded, which is where moron comes from. Although I'm not but wearing it's... my ring right now, so. Yeah, I'm not wearing my ring right now either. Can you see that? 
Ah, no yeah, your 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 middle man ring. Your, yeah, that's, your, boy, your boyfriend that. ring. Yeah. Uh, is your boyfriend upset with that? Um, I can yeah, he is. He is. You, he is. You won't like what I have to say about. It. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and end the show with that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to watch us on. Well, we're gonna be on the Liberty Principle page. So what this will probably re-air this on the Liberty Principle page tomorrow. And you can also Should we redo this show? What's that? Should we redo this show? Why would we Look, redo this show? This show's I'm awesome. A little embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? Because of the, the art humility that you suffered at my hands? Dude, no. You get I, through it's it. the other way around. I'm embarrassed no, for you. No, 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 no. <laughs> and no embarrassment here, man. So uh, uh, we'll be on the Liberty Principle page tomorrow, maybe around 6. I think it's 6. And uh, so if you're watching now, uh, this is a pre-recorded show. So keep watching because it's still awesome. And we'll be on IPMNation.com Thursday night at 6 p.m. Yay. And we'll see you next week where we'll talk about guns and stuff. What he said. I think. <laughs>